So let's look at anomaly detection with neural networks. There's a million different ways to do anomaly detection, and this is not meant to be a comprehensive treatment of this at all, but I'm showing one particular approach that you can use. We're going to use autoencoders. We're going to teach autoencoders to, to, to compress data like they are quite good at, and then we're going to evaluate the effectiveness of how they decompress the data. So if you've trained a compressor, an encoder, on one particular type of data, and now you get a new type of data, an anomaly, it's probably not going to be as good at compressing it. And that's the basic technique that we're talking about here. Like I said, there's a million ways to do this. This is probably not even the best way to do it, but this is one way that fits in nicely with the technologies that we're using in this course. And it's, it's certainly effective. So there's a number of different data sets that you can use for anomaly detection. I am going to make use of the KDD99. It's, it's nearly a 25-year-old data set, but it, it's, it's effective for showing how to do this. It is a security data set. Surprisingly, it's still used a lot for security data even in this day and age, despite, despite its age. So this code here basically reads in the data set reads it into the current directory, so in Colab, you're, it's, you will be able to use it. I was actually running this last on a Mac, and I always test it between the Mac and Colab just to make sure everything works, at least to the degree that I can. Some of the stuff that I teach in this course does require CUDA, but by and large, a lot of it works on the, on the Macintosh. So here I load it. I read the rows in because I'm reading the CSV into a Pandas data frame, and I display some stats on it. It's got quite a few, almost half a million rows. So there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of data there. And we're gonna look at the outcomes. One outcome is normal, which we're gonna classify as normal. And then there's other attacks like where's client and where's master and all kinds of neat things that hackers name their technology after. So we're gonna to need to do some pre-processing on this data. This data has a lot of fields that have various network protocols, strings. Most of those can be encoded just straight up to dummy variables. There's a lot of numbers and varying ranges. So I just compress all of those, or not compress, but normalize all of those into Z scores. Or Z scores, if you're pretty much anywhere on the earth other than the United States of America. So here we encode the numeric z-score, that's just the utility function that I give. It's calculate the mean and the standard de deviation and performing the appropriate formula for a z or a z-score. Encode text dummy, these are encoding the dummy variables and we're basically letting pandas generate dummy variables. That's one hot encoding. Maybe you have eight different categoricals. You would have eight or seven if you want to all map all zero to something, but let's just figure eight, then one of those will be hot, representing the, the index of the category that it's encoding, and the rest zero. So we convert our data all into that format. We also have a process data frame. I need to remove that little bit there. That's actually not, not necessary. Uh, there were no Booleans actually in this data, but if you did have Booleans, that, it would, that would be necessary. Because one thing that's interesting about pandas uh, when used with PyTorches, if you don't tell it any differently, it's going to map all of those booleans to a bool value. And if you just straight push that into a tensor that you're going to throw into PyTorch, you'll get an error. So we encode all of the data, and you can see the data being encoded here, and we drop any rows that are missing values. There's not many of them, if any. Then what we're going to do is segregate the data into two different parts based on the outcome. If the outcome was normal, it's considered a normal. If the outcome was not normal, it's not normal. We're going to drop the outcome then, and we're basically going to take these two, these two values. So we're looking at all of the rows where a security attack was underway as the unnormal, and then the normal is cases where there was nothing going on. And we're going to see if we can learn to differentiate between those two. So to train the autoencoder, we are going to split it in a train test split. And 
we're going to convert both of those sides so that we can ba basically create a relatively simple auto encoder. So this is a little more complex than the autocoder we had before. It's basically, it's like a little hourglass in there. There's 25 and then three in the middle. So that's another approach for, for doing one of these. And then we enter the training loop, printing out the, the results on these, these epochs. And you can see, I don't train it too long, but it does gradually decrease. You check the counts, make sure everything is what you're expecting there. And then to actually detect an anomaly, we are going to calculate the multiple scores across each of these, these two data sets that we've generated. And you can see basically the accuracy on the out of sample and the in sample, which should be roughly the same, are 0 0.38, 0 0.39. And then when attack is underway, it's much higher at 0 0.51. So this shows you a basic way that you can do an anomaly test in Python using PyTorch. Thank you for watching this video. If it was useful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos on artificial intelligence and machine learning.